Hi everybody, I'm Henry Meyer from Miami County Extension Service. Uh, welcome to this uh, beautiful landscape here in the, in the paradise. We have a lot of canopy here, but I want to show you what is going on with the trees. Some trees are in bad shape and some trees are good. Let's see, for example, this desert cassia here. You can see it's a beautiful uh, landscape tree. The tree is more or less like a three years old but something is wrong with the tree. The tree is uh, leaning, leaning to the right. So why the tree is leaning to the right? Well, we, we can see here the roots, they have some problems. Some of the roots are going in circles and this is not good for the tree because the tree is going to be in very unstable situation here. So what uh, we can do with the roots? Well, uh, we can cut or remove some roots in some, in some cases. In other cases, we cannot do nothing and we need to remove the tree. Let me show you here. This is a, a trunk sample for a gambolimbo and this is exactly what I'm talking about. The roots are in circles and this tree, if we plant this gambolimbo here, is going to, be, it's going to happen exactly the same thing the tree never is going to be established and always is going to move and this is not what we want. This is a beautiful isoloma tree and it's almost the same age, it's a three years old tree and you can see the tree is straight. Again, I'm not a very strong guy but it's impossible to move it. So what's the difference between the desert cassia and the lysaloma, the only thing that is different is the roots. You can see the roots over there, the roots are going from the trunk out to the landscape. It's like a, this one here. So this is a small tree, so the roots are going from the trunk out to the landscape. And this is exactly what you are looking for. So the, the question is, can you correct a tree with root, with root problems? So, well, let's see Microfanidis from Broward County Extension Office and Juan Sierra from Lawn Care USA. They're going to explain to us how they can correct this landscape problem. Well, we're actually doing some uh, root uh, excavations because we uh, had reason to believe we had some stem girdling roots on some of these young trees that were planted a few years ago. Um, they've been probably over mulched several times around and uh, you know, we were just curious to see if uh, there were any roots that might be circling the base of the tree at the trunk that might be uh, needing to be cut to kind of relieve that pressure on the trunk. This is an ideal time. I mean, the tree is established. It's been here for a couple years now. Um, admittedly, it was planted a little high because the ground here tends to be a little wet, especially in the summertime. Um, but this darn mulching, you know, over mulching the trees, as with, has been the case here, I think may have contributed to the development of these roots. If you look at them closely, we've got one, uh, it's about three quarter of an inch diameter that at least is going around 50% of the trunk uh, circumference. There's another set of roots down below, a little smaller, and maybe even yet a third. I have no problem, no qualms at all of cutting most, if not all, of these offending roots today. None of them are really um, more than an inch in diameter. And uh, if you look at the tree overall, I mean, it's very healthy, very vigorous. Uh, so I think getting rid of those roots isn't gonna be an issue uh, whatsoever. There's a number of different tools that we arborists use when we do uh, removal of stem girdling roots. Um, so some good things to have. Uh, I like to have a little claw. This kind of helps dig away some of the extra mulch. Uh, a lot of times you'll see these things protruding above the mulch layer. Sometimes they're right below it. Um, you know, we use this to kind of excavate some of that back so we can actually, you know, have some room to work and see what we're dealing with. You can also use a little spade, a little trowel, uh, but I prefer the, the claw here. And then uh, a little pair of falcos for cutting the small diameter roots. Um, <clears throat> for dealing with the larger ones, uh, Juan, you want to hand me the little root pruning 
saw can work or even a reciprocating saw uh, works really nice. And um, sometimes it's also good because these roots can be embedded into the trunk tissues and if you want to try to you know, pry them out, uh, cold chisel and a little sledgehammer works real well. Juan, do you want to take a stab at either using the returning uh, saw or the reciprocating saw? And maybe the first one we'll take out is, is this one right up here, about uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter. Yes, I wanted to see where the root starts over here. I think we're going to start there. It's important to make sure that when you're cutting the stem girdling root that you don't actually cut into the trunk itself. The trunk itself, yeah. Sometimes when these roots are under pressure uh, and you cut them, they'll actually pop. There you go. It popped. It popped, you see? Yep. Okay, so now it's a matter of removing it. Go the end. Mike. All right. I'm going to actually see if I can get at it with the There is another on one there. Wants. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there it goes. And you can see there's a bit of an indentation here where that root laid in up against the trunk. Um, now we've got another one to deal with right here, a little small one. This is a sausage tree, by the way, one of our tropical favorites. Um, Juan, I, what do you think? I, I, I'm kind of bothered by this one here. I mean, it eventually does go out away from the trunk, which is a good thing because we want that to anchor the tree, but I'm concerned about the fact that it's laying in here uh, up against the trunk. So. I think that it serves to go. Okay, so I think I'm going to go ahead and take this out, this section, and then that'll allow me to be able to get into here, and then we'll make another cut over here. Is that reasonable? Yeah, it makes sense. It is. that chisel. Okay. Perfect. Yep. And I did not damage the base of trunk tissues at all. Okay, so we've done a whole lot of good here, I think. The um, question is always, can more be done? The answer often is yes. When we learn through research and education that trees have certain needs and if those needs aren't met that they can cause early decline or potentially create a hazardous condition down the road, which stem girdling roots can do, um, we need to take action to try to prevent that.